Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to repair a quilt. Whether you have a tear in it or you have a block in wrong, the method is the same either way. So I'm gonna show you how to take something out and put it back in and have your quilt as good as new. We need a couple of tools. You need either a seam ripper or snips. You don't have to use both. I prefer to use snips, but we need to get the stitches out where we've got this block wrong. So I'm gonna start taking the stitches out, the quilting. So I'm just going to snip about every third stitch. So I'm sliding right underneath the thread and snipping. If you wanna use the seam ripper, it's the same method. We're gonna slide underneath that thread and then it's got a sharp part in here that will cut your thread. So all you have to do is get underneath that thread and then pull forward. Now you wanna be careful with either the seam ripper or the snips that you don't stab into your quilt and pick up any of those stitches or any of those threads. You really only wanna get the stitches here. So I'm gonna go and do all of the quilting stitching, all of the stitching that where the quilting is all around this block and maybe, maybe an inch farther than that. Now I'm gonna go to the back side here and all of this stitching when we pull the bobbin thread here, because the top is all snipped, this stuff will pull out pretty easy. I'm gonna have to keep checking to see where my block is. So if you just go under this a little bit and pull, it's gonna pull out all that stitching. You can see that all the stitching is taken out here. We've still got some stray threads and we'll pick those off in a minute. But before we go any farther, I want to mark the back of the quilt where it was quilted so that I can re-stitch it in the same spots. And I need to do that on the back because the top, we're gonna turn a block. So while there's still threads here, I'm taking a chalk pencil and I'm going to draw right along the stitching line from the quilting so that I can quilt it after I get it repaired and it'll be quilted in the same pattern. There's chalk on all of the stitching lines. And the next thing we need to do is pull out all of these little threads. You can try using a lint roller. It'll grab a lot of the threads. It may make the chalk a little faded, so you might wanna draw that over again. It doesn't have to be drawn everywhere, just enough so we can make continuous stitching. Once you have those threads pulled from the backside, when you flip it back over, there's very little left over here but I'm also going to get rid of all of these little guys. I need to take out this entire block here. So I'm going to need to get underneath some of the stitching so that I can get that block out. So you can pull the seam open a little bit here. I don't know if you can see, and you can get your seam allowance behind the thread where the block was being stitched together and just break one of the threads. Once you get one thread, it's pretty easy to get in there and get some more threads. So you've probably, if you've done any sewing at all, you've taken out seams like this before. I'm coming to where the end of the patchwork is here, but I'm gonna take the seam out a little bit farther because it'll make it easier to stitch this back in. And you may find, like I am, that you wanna take a little more of your quilting out. So I'm gonna take just this little bit out here also because I think that will make it easier to get the patchwork block back in. I'm gonna go down this seam here. You can snip and pull and snip and pull or use your seam ripper, whatever is the easiest for you. That's the last few stitches. And I'm gonna take off all of the threads off the block, along with all of the little threads that are here. If you had had a quilt with a tear in it, even if it was larger and hit more patchwork, the method would be the same. You would just take out a section, a big enough section to accommodate the tear, and then you would replace it with either the same fabrics or some similar fabrics using the same methods. I actually just noticed something. The block is not only turned incorrectly, the block was not made correctly. So no matter how I turn it, 
the pieces are in the wrong spot. So if I'm turning it like this, I've got the green facing the right way, but this piece needs to go over there. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more surgery here. So I need to swap these two pieces. This kind of seam ripping is pretty easy because I'm on the back side and I can see exactly what to take out. So you can either reach under here and snip like we were doing earlier, or you can just go right underneath these stitches like this. We can swap these two pieces here, but before we do that, I think I'm gonna iron everything up a little bit. You can steam it flat. I'm still seeing all the needle holes from where we stitched it earlier, where it was quilted, but if you spray a little water on it, those little holes, they will all relax and go away. You can rub it a little with your finger, but you can pretty much get any stitching hole, because it didn't rip the fabric, it just parted those threads a little bit. And then when we iron it up, they're almost all invisible. I've got a few here showing, but those are going to be in the seam allowance anyway. The rest of these, just rub them a little and they will completely disappear. Let's get these in the right spots. That's where they go. And I'm just going to stitch each corner back into position here. So the challenge is to get it in exactly the same spot that the previous piece was in and because we've got the dog ears trimmed off, that actually helps us see where to put it there. It just looks a little messy because we've got the other pieces partially stitched. But now it's in the exact same spot, and I'll finger press both of these just a little bit. Let's press that one in. So I'm pressing that seam allowance in. And now we can stitch this last seam up, get everything in position here, and the block will be all correct. That is what the block should look like. We've got one little stray piece to stitch up here. Now we've got the block correct. Once you have your block ready to go back in the quilt, whether it's turned correctly or it's a replacement block from a tear, how do we get this back in? That's gonna be our next step. And before I put it in, I'm gonna take this whole quilt all over to the sewing machine. Since I'm going to be working along these seams here that have some patchwork, because we ripped these out, some of these are opening up a little bit. So I'm gonna re-stitch and back tack these seams so they don't open up any farther. So I'm gonna do that before I move on. There, that one's done, so that one won't come apart. And I'm gonna do the same thing for every patchwork seam that's coming in here. So we'll do this one next. I stitched up and reinforced these seams here. I'm not stitching the corners, I want those open. Just these patchwork seams right there. Now we can put this piece and we can stitch this whole seam here and we can do it on the machine. So I'll line everything up here and pull it over under the machine. I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit. And stitch this piece, this one seam, we'll stitch it back up.
Now let's take a look. All right, that fit in there very nicely. Now I'm going to stitch this seam back up. I can do that on the machine and the rest of it will all be done by hand. Let's tuck this piece underneath all of these outside sides here. So this piece is gonna fit right there. So it's tucked right in and I'm just going to ease it into place and I re-ironed these seam allowances a little bit. That's the way they were ironed originally back under all three sides and now I'm going to pin it in place. I'm using some really little pins here. These are size 20 pins. I want a very fine pin so that I can just grab the top couple layers and this will hold it in place while we hand stitch. You don't have to pin it, but I think it's going to help me get everything lined up correctly. So I'm going to pin all around these three loose sides. Next, we need a fine needle with some gold thread. I'm using gold because it's kind of in the middle between all these colors here. And I'm going to start on this seam here, and I need to stitch this way. So I'm going to try to get my needle in. I'm going to go in the opening here a little past where there's no stitching and take my needle out right in the seam there. Make sure that knot is well behind there. And then I'm just going to do small little stitches catching the brown and catching the light one or two stitches at a time. So you can do one little stitch like that and then we can go in the background here and do a little stitch. And I'm going to keep doing this all the way along. And as I pull them tight, that thread will become invisible. Now, if you see some of these threads from earlier, that white one there, you can do this now or you can do it afterwards. It's hard to grab them sometimes, but you can take some tweezers and you can pull that out. Then you can get really close and snip that off. I think we've got two little ones there. We've got that guy and this one here because I don't like any stray threads once I've repaired something. I don't want any of these little guys peeking out because it, then it looks messy. It looks like you made a mistake and fixed it, which we did, but we don't want it to show. So let's get that trimmed and then we'll keep stitching. I've stitched all the way down this side, all the way to that intersection there. And it's open a little bit here, so I'm going to stitch this way till I get past the opening there. Then I'm going to stitch along here. I'm just going to stitch backwards on this part. You can use big stitches when you're going over it again. And then I'll do this side and this side. Let's do one more stitch. I'd like to tie off right in the intersection here because the knot will show less. So to do a knot with hand stitching like this, I'm going to take a very small stitch and then wrap it around the needle three times, pull the needle through, get that knot all the way down in there, and trim it off. Now it's looking pretty good. And the last step will be to re-quilt all the quilting stitching. Before we finish off the last stitching, I'm going to double check and make sure that my chalk is still showing because when you move it around a lot, that chalk could start to come off and I want to make sure I know where I'm going. Let's find one of the stitching lines. So here's one here. I'm going to, I've got the thread, I've got the thread, the machine threaded with exactly the same color thread that I quilted with. And I'm going to just overlap a little bit, back tack a couple of stitches, and just follow the chalk lines. So it's pretty easy. And I'll just keep turning and sewing so that I can go right along those lines. And when I come to the point way up here, then I'll pivot.
and go back down. This is actually a lot easier than trying to load it back onto your quilting machine because we're going to be stopping and starting some and that would be hard to do on the quilting machine. The quilting is all done and if you look from back here you can't really even tell which block it is. If you look really really closely you might be able to identify that it's that block but the quilting is all one continuous motion there. Here's the back side. I've still got some chalk on there, but the chalk comes off real easy. Almost any kind of rubbing, the chalk is going to disappear. That's not going to be a problem at all. So remember, you use this same method, whether you are replacing a block that's been torn or fixing a block that was turned wrong. It just takes a little bit of time, but you can successfully get that done and you can almost not even tell that a repair was made. Thank you so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. At the end of every video, we do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a quilt we made in the pattern called Eclectica Set Spinning. And these are fabrics from Moda and they're called Lighthearted. It's a very happy looking quilt. It's very cheerful. It's got the red around there and the aquas in the middle. Nice floral print on the back. We have a video to show you how to make a quilt like this, but if, if you want to win one, just enter the giveaway by clicking the link right below this video that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address and you might be the lucky winner. Now if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting!